Now, I was discussing about uh, the factor determining supply. There can be two more factors. I have already discussed price, input prices, techniques of production, goals of the firms, prices of related commodities, nature of the industry, natural factors. There can be two more factors determining demand, uh, supply. One is prices of uh, uh, effects of taxation and subsidy. If higher taxes, like indirect taxes, sales tax, VAT, now it is GST, if higher taxes are taken by the government, if higher taxes are imposed on the commodities, it would be as if a higher cost of production is there. And that would be a burden on the producer. So the producer would be more burdened. And so his inclination to produce more is not there. Rather, he would produce less and less. But if subsidy is given, that means government gives a part of the cost of production to the firm. <coughs> Sorry. Now, if subsidy is given, <coughs> then that is like an advantage for the firm. Because the firm owner uh, gets a part of the cost of production from the government. That means as if the cost of production for the firm owner decreases. And as it decreases, what happens? He's motivated, he's encouraged to produce more and supply more in the market. So this is how the policy of the government for taxation and subsidy can affect the supply. The last one now, availability of transport and communication facilities. This is very easy. Availability of transport and communication facilities. If a particular firm, a company or a factory is located in such a location, which has very easy, very good transportation network or connection, communication network is very easy to get. Communication facilities, transportation facilities are easily available to that factory over there. Then it can send, dispatch and send supply its products to different other places. So supply will be more. Whereas if a particular firm's factory is located in a very remote village uh, for which the connection to other cities and towns like uh, transportation and communication facilities are not so easily available. Then the supply would be less. Then the supply would be less. So this is how transport and communication facilities affect the supply. Okay. So earlier I have discussed all the other points and now the two uh, last two factors are my main supply. Now I come to the next topic here, law of supply. Like a demand chapter, there is law of demand, here we have law of supply. Now, law of supply states that when the price of a commodity rises, its quantity supplied by the producer rises. And when the price of a commodity falls, its quantity supplied will fall. Comma ceteris paribus. Ceteris paribus, that is other things remaining constant. So this is law of supply. Uh, let me restate it. Let me restate it. When the price of a commodity rises, its quantity supplied rises. And when the price of a commodity falls, its quantity supplied falls. Ceteris paribus, that is other things remaining constant. This is law of supply. Now, supply function. Supply function. What is a supply function? Supply function is a, the function is the functional statement showing the functional relationship between supply of a commodity and the determinants of supply. All the determinants. Price of the commodity, goals of the firms, techniques of production, input prices, all these. If we express in the form of an equation the functional relationship between supply of a commodity and the determinants of supply, then that is called supply function. How do we express it? Capital letter S, 
subscript x a little below writing x that means supply of commodity x is equal to is equal to sign small letter f after is equal to small letter f that means is a function of then within first brackets different factors symbolically written capital p x price of the commodity that same commodity x g gold dollar firms technical production t input prices p i or p f prices of factor production in this way we can express all different determinants of supply symbolically by using different symbols now that doesn't mean that it's very rigid uh, whatever symbol that i'm using or in your textbook whatever is written you have to write that no you can use any symbol but it will show that you are writing below what this symbol is representing so this is supply function next supply schedule supply schedule let's see h e d u l e supply schedule is the tabular presentation tabular presentation of the positive relationship or the direct relationship between price and quantity supplied supply schedule is the tabular presentation of the positive of the positive relationship or, uh, or the direct relationship between price and quantity supplied if we can express that represent that depict that in a tabular form that is called supply schedule now, as supply is of two types individual supply and market supply so supply schedule is also of two types individual supply schedule and market supply schedule first individual supply schedule it is a table which shows different quantities of the commodity that one individual producer is willing to or is supplying at different prices so there are just two columns just two columns uh, one column the left side column is price and the second column the right side column is quantity supplied price and quantity supplied it's a very simple uh, table consisting of two columns now in the first column the left side column let me show prices rising 10 20 30 40 50 and as price rises supply will also rise 1 2 3 4 5 that's it see price i'm showing rising 10 20 30 40 50 and quantity supplied is also rising 1 2 3 4 5 any value we can choose we can put any value but we have to be sure that we are showing price to rise continuously or we can show price to fall continuously if we are showing that price is rising continuously then we must show quantity supplied is also rising and vice versa so this is supply schedule individual supply schedule now i come to <clears throat> market supply schedule i come to market supply schedule now my market supply schedule is going to represent how much total quantity of the commodity how much total quantity of the commodity all the producers in the entire market are supplying at different prices not one or two or three all the producers in the entire market here there's a problem the problem is suppose this kind of pen or any commodity if we consider then in the whole market of india how many suppliers are there in the whole market of india who are supplying producing and supplying pen different types of pens at different prices maybe uh, 300 producers or maybe 3000 producers a large number if there are suppose 3000 producers can we represent the case of 3000 producers in a table uh, not only difficult it may be rather impossible task for anyone to do we cannot then what to do then can't we represent the market demand schedule can't we make such a market demand schedule yes we can yes we can for that we have to make an assumption 
And this assumption is just to make our analysis simplified. For the sake of simplicity, we would make an assumption. And the assumption is there are three producers. There are three producers. Suppose producer A, producer B, and producer C. Now we can make a market supply schedule. First column price. First column price. Within brackets rupees. Second, third, and fourth column. Quantity supplied in units, surely, in units by A, B, and C. Capital A, capital B, and capital C. We are assuming that there are three producers here, A, B, and C. This is not reality. In reality, there may be 3,000 producers. But for the sake of simplicity, we are assuming and showing that there are three producers. Now the last column is market supply. Again in units. Again the values, you may put any value of your choice. Only ensure that, only ensure that you are showing either price to rise continuously or price to fall continuously. You cannot show price fluctuations, ups and downs, we can't show. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, I am showing these are the prices, price is rising, continuously price is rising, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Now quantity supplied, Now, here, see the table. This table shows price 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Price is rising. As price is rising, quantity supplied by A, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Quantity supplied by B, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7. Quantity supplied by C, 1, 2, 4, 5, 6. One thing to be noticed here, as price is rising, these quantities supplied by A, B, and C are also rising continuously. We can't show fluctuations. Then how do we get this last column? It's very easy to sum up these, to sum up these. At the price of rupees 10, what is the total quantity supplied? 1 plus 2 plus 1. At the price of rupee, uh, tw rupees 20, what is the total quantity supplied? Market supply 2 plus 3 plus 2. So this is 4. This is... 7, 3 plus 4 plus 4, 11, this is 15, and this is 18. These represent the total market supply in units. Then, this market supply for values we get by adding up the quantity supplied by the three producers which we have assumed in the market, right? That's it. This is supply schedule. This is supply schedule. Individual supply schedule, market supply schedule. And the next topic, see, supply schedule is what? Supply schedule is the tabular presentation of the positive or direct relationship between price and quantity supplied. Now we come to supply curve. See, similar topics in demand chapter we have uh, dealt with. Here a supply curve. What is supply curve? It is the graphical presentation of the positive or direct relationship between price and quantity supply. Supply schedule is the tabular presentation. Supply curve is the graphical presentation. Again, supply is of two types. Individual supply, market supply. So here again, we have individual supply curve and market supply curve. Individual supply curve and market supply curve. Firstly, individual supply curve. Individual supply curve is one graph, one curve in a graph which shows how much quantity of the quantity is supplied by only one individual producer at different prices. So there will be one curve in a graph. Obviously, the nature of the curve in the graph is positively sloped, upward sloping. Why not? There's a direct relationship, there's a positive relationship between price and quantity supply. Price rises, supply rises. 
price falls, supply falls. And that is why the curve is upward sloping. So uh, the supply curve has to be upward sloping. It is an upward sloping curve. So individual supply curve. Individual supply curve. Along the x-axis, we measure quantity supplied. You must mention supplied here. Along the y-axis, price. Then this is individual supply curve. See, one curve in a graph. It's upward sloping. Why not price? If price rises from P1 to P2, quantity supplied rises from Q1 to Q2. That is why. And vice versa. So this is individual supply curve. Now I come to market supply curve. Individual supply curve. And now I come to market supply curve after this. Firstly, what is, what is market supply curve? Market supply curve represents the supply curve which shows the total quantity of the commodity which is produced and supplied by all the producers in the entire market. Here again that problem arises. If there are 300 or 3000 producers, can we draw 300 curves even? We cannot. We cannot draw 300 curves in a page. What about a page? If we take 3, 4, 5, 10 pages also, we cannot draw uh, 300 curves or in a graph, in, in 300 graphs. So what to do? Again, similar assumption we have to make. For the sake of simplicity, we have to make this kind of assumption. What assumption? Here I am making it more simplified uh, while drawing the market supply curve, while deriving the market supply curve. Let me assume that there are two producers. I am assuming for the sake of simplicity that there are two producers. Then we can make uh, uh, the derivation of the market supply curve. The first, the left side graph will show the individual supply curve for individual A, that is individual producer A. The middle one, this will show the individual supply curve for individual producer B. And the last one, the right side, extreme right side will show the market supply curve for the market. In case of all the three graphs, along the x-axis, quantity supplied, Quantity supplies, so I'm writing QS, QS, QS. Along the Y axis, in all the three graphs, we are showing price, price, and price here. Let this be SA, SA, individual supply curve for supplier A. This is SB, SB, individual supply curve for supplier B. By adding these two laterally or horizontally, the horizontal summation, lateral summation, lateral means sideways, horizontal in this way. If we add the two individual supply curves, we'll get a curve like this. And this is SS. See, this one is obtained by the horizontal summation or addition, horizontal summation or lateral summation of the two individual supply curves. We get this. Now, how do we do it? What is the process? At the price of rupees 5, suppose, individual producer supplies 1 to 3 units. At the same price, at the price of rupees 5, individual producer B has supplied 1, 2, 3, 4 units. Then, at the price of rupees 5, what is the total quantity supplied in the market by both that is together in the entire market? 3 plus 4, 7. So, this is 7. I mark a point, I plot a point here. In the same way, if I take another price to pay 10, then individual producer B A has producer A has supplied five units. Individual producer B has supplied five, six, seven units. Then total how much of these two? Five plus seven, 
12. Then at the price of rupees 10, what is the total quantity supplied in the market? 12. So this is 12. I plot another point here. Join these two points, get a curve, and this is the market supply curve. So this is the process in which we get the market supply curve by the lateral summation or horizontal summation of the two individual supply curves. This is about supply schedule, supply curve. We complete a major part of supply chapter till now. Thank you. In the later session, I'll start from the next topic. Thank you.